Since the beginning of time, forests have been providing humankind with habitat, building materials, and energy. Their sustainable use is an essential building block in our fight against climate change. As all green plants, trees absorb CO2 from the air and store the carbon, as well as solar energy, in the wood. One cubic meter of wood is able to store the carbon of roughly one ton of CO2 and enough solar energy to boil 15,000 liters of water. And what happens to the oxygen? Trees simply release it into the atmosphere. The entire process is known as photosynthesis. Then once wood decays in the forest or is used as fuel for heating, the carbon and oxygen stored combine and once again form CO2. Thus, the same amount of CO2 is released as the trees absorbed during their period of growth. The cycle is complete. With fossil fuels, however, the situation is completely different. Carbon from oil, natural gas, or coal comes from deep inside the Earth's crust, is transported across far distances, burned, and increases the CO2 in the atmosphere. This process is the main cause of global warming. However, if we use wood to generate heat, we make an important contribution to the slowing down of global warming. The way the forests impact the CO2 content in the atmosphere depends primarily on whether and how the forests are managed. When taking a look at a forest that is not managed, we see three phases of development. Regeneration, for example, after a forest fire is the phase in which young new trees are germinated that will later on, during their growth phase, store large volumes of CO2. The phase of decay sets in at the end of the lifetime of the trees. This is when the CO2 stored is released into the atmosphere as a result of decomposition. The CO2 cycle is complete. Areas of forest binding CO2 and those releasing CO2 are in balance. The overall volume of carbon stored in the forest remains roughly the same. With a managed forest, the picture is completely different. It makes a significantly larger contribution in the terms of protecting the climate. With sustainable management practices, the forest is kept in the phase of maximum growth. This means that the managed forest continuously absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere. Wood is not left to decompose in the forest, but harvested and used as timber in a variety of ways, such as for creating wood products, which help protect our climate. Timber for construction, wood flooring, or wood furniture can replace other products that are produced using large amounts of energy and therefore emitting large volumes of CO2. The advantage? Carbon in wood products remains stored, as in the case of building and construction timber for several decades. And waste products from harvesting and processing trees, such as wood for heating, wood chips, pellets, and scrap wood, replace fossil fuels and thus their CO2 emissions. The CO2 savings are significant, as is made very clear in the example of a modern wooden house. Construction of this wooden house generates enough byproducts to heat the house for 70 years. If 40 cubic meters of wood are used in construction, burning the byproducts generated will save 100 tons of CO2 compared to oil. Another 40 tons of CO2 are stored in the wooden structure. In this way, the wooden house will save more than 140 tons of CO2 from being released into the atmosphere. This amount roughly equals 50 years of driving a car. Did you know? At the end of its life cycle, the wood products used to build the house can also be used as fuel. Responsible forest owners and strict forest laws ensure that only as much wood is harvested from our forests as is growing back in the same year. For this reason, the amount of stored CO2 not only increases in wood products but also in the forest. Since 1980, the stock of wood in the forest in Austria has grown by roughly 40%. Thus, heating and building with wood from sustainably managed forests is one of the most effective means of climate protection. Good heat grows back. This information has been provided by the Austrian Biomass Association, supported by Austrian federal and state governments and the European Union.